Hello, YouTube. This is Yuan. Uh, I wanted to do one more video before the year end to kind of talk about another subject, another target that I recently imaged uh, with the um, Bicardi Honda's 200 astrograph, the 600 millimeter f3 uh, telescope. And the reason I wanted to show it is just to kind of show the impressive data uh, capture capabilities of this telescope and show uh, what I could capture uh, in a recently bright object that sometimes takes 20-30 hours to get to a level where you know you would be happy with it. This is the Heart Nebula. Uh, it is up most of the year for me. Um, it is kind of in a good place in the summer towards the spring where it's lower, it's higher uh, up in the sky so I don't have to worry about light pollution coming from houses or the highway or a few other things and um, yeah let's take a look at the data before I, I start let's look at my telescope I wanted to add a few more details based on some of the questions that uh, a few of you asked so my telescope this telescope that I use is a mark one it's the first edition of the Riccardi Honda's 200 made by Officina Stellare it's I think about 10 years old or at least eight years old. There are many versions of this telescope created. There is a Mark II, there's a Mark II with a tilt adjustment, there's an AT or a thermal. Every single improvement that you see on this telescope comes with a new generation. So the AT has better optics, a slightly bigger tube, which is made out of carbon fiber. The Mark II has all of that plus a few other things, a different baffle system, a different dew shield, a different tilt plate so they're all excellent to be honest I think um, I've seen about four of them and given the right expertise and I have a friend who collimates them really really well there are they're much much better than the Takahashi FSQs 106s or the other uh, quote-unquote astrographs you can hear at the same uh, level it's it's miles better than anything Grasa will ever achieve. So if you're interested, you can buy a new or you can look for one used like I did. Um, it's There's risk either way, it's a deflector. Uh, it can be severely out of collimation. In that case, it might be hard to get it right. But this telescope is definitely one of the best wide field telescopes I've used. And I've had a bunch in Orion, I've had the FSQ, I've had a bunch of Takahashi Epsilons. This is definitely the best. Uh, now the filters I use are regular filters. They're not the high speed kind. They're chroma, chroma uh, five nanometers. I also have a set of three and an eight nanometer HA. They all work really well. Um, the Radian Quad, which is this filter here, does not work uh, on this F3 uh, telescope. It has some band shift and it has some weird artifacts coming with it. But for those who are who are asking, my filters are just regular chroma uh, narrowband filters, nothing special about them. Uh, and my camera, again, is the QHY 600 mono. I use a mono camera because data capture is much better in mono. So with that out of the way, let's look at the data and see what I got. Uh, this data has been captured over quite a while. Uh, I started back in July and August to capture this. Um, and then the heat, uh, the heat waves kind of made it almost impossible to image uh, because the temperature differences are so big, the optics were so um, hard to manage. The, even the guide scope was kind of uh, changing focus pretty quickly because of the temperature drop. So I started doing HA and oxygen. Uh, this is about uh, seven hours, almost eight hours of HA. And the details are really good, again, the fact that you can see this really sharp at 600 millimeters, it's a pretty big thing. It, it, it does not cease to amaze me, the, the quality that this little 8-inch telescope can, can bring out, the details. And again, the noise is really good, the stars are round. Um, but because of the weird the temperature differences and everything, you can see the stars are not perfectly round because the temperature differences are so big uh, that this telescope kept changing focus, uh, losing focus, and I had to adjust it. And if I had the thermal, that would be a lot bit, uh, better. 
the uh, O3 is pretty good. Same problem, a little bit the star's elongation. It's a combination of the optics and guiding because of the uh, extreme kind of heat temperature differences. Uh, it's not flat filled properly for some reason. I know that in the end I use the dynamic background extraction to flat field this and the sulfur. The sulfur is a lot easier. The biggest problem is that the sulfur and uh, was offset from the hydrogen and oxygen because since then I've moved the camera slightly uh, because I changed the filter wheel. So um, I had to see if this data is even compatible. As you can see, it's a little bit different. Let me pull up my J. So if you look at the hydrogen alpha data, which is always the most beautiful, and look at the sulfur data, the sulfur data is better framing than the hydrogen. So I knew that this was going to be a compromise where I had to crop a piece of it and end up using enough of the nebula that I was really happy, but not uh, the composition that I subsequently thought was better, which is in the sulfur. So I did a regular um, stack and I used HAS for luminance. It looked okay, it looked nice. Uh, as you can see, even after some cropping and some other things that there's still some some over some, some missing parts in some of the channels. In this case, I believe red is missing and that's why sulfur didn't have this. So that's why it's looking like that. But I was happy. You can see the stars a little bit off. It needed deconvolution. So I did deconvolute it here. I did not use the blood exterminator as I processed this a while ago. Um, so it was really good. Um, I did the same old process that I do. I took this image that was stretched and I removed all the green using SCNR on both the regular uh, part of the image and the inverted part. Um, so that would give me the ability to see to remove the magenta stars. I was trying to show you that, but this, the image had to be uh, stretched, which is not. So after that, I started looking at what can I uh, do with this nebula, how much detail I can pull out. And it turns out there was a lot. Actually, I've shot this object many times. I've never finished an image wide field with it. I tried to shoot it with the FSQ, but I was being too ambitious with the mosaic of the heart and soul. So I ended up just shooting uh, pieces of it. This is the first time I complete an image and I'm really happy with the results. The colors look really good and vibrant. The oxygen levels are um, what I want them to be. The little planetary nebula here uh, is also really visible, which is, again, goes to show you the power of aperture and uh, faster, well-designed astrographs. It can collect a lot of data really fast. Now, I've captured this at 1600 millimeters, 2000 millimeters. It's close. It's not, it's obviously not enough, not the same amount of resolution, but it's really impressive for this field of view and for the 61 megapixel resolution of my camera it is a very very good combination although i have big pixels so that's why i always deconvolute now let's look at the final results i try to be a bit more dramatic with the final results i did some color mixing in photoshop a little bit the stars have been reduced a little bit i am again i'm very happy with the final image um, I wasn't expecting that much use. When I first looked at the stacked files, I thought maybe I'll get some nebulosity around the center in Melot 15. I didn't think the fish head was even possible to get this amount of detail. The dust around it is always what I'm looking for. My goal is to show nebulosity, is to show the gases that exist in the part of space. The stars, well, the stars are not accurate because they're captured in narrowband, so their color is not real. So in that sense, to me, the stars are beautiful to have, small and as almost like reference points, as pinpoints of light, but what I'm trying to capture is nebulosity. That's my goal, and that's what I want to show, this beautiful creation that we see from space in our galaxy. Uh, all of the nebulas you, you see me shoot are in our galaxy, and when I say creation, I mean neb um, supernovas and other events that created them make them really beautiful. Um, so this is my final image. I know this is not a long video, but I wanted to show um, you guys on YouTube and the world this image. I've posted it, um, I think, on Astrobin and Instagram, and it's been well received. I'm curious to think what you guys think. And uh, in the new year, so about 
maybe more than a week from now, I'll be starting a Patreon channel to help you guys get into astrophotography, explain what equipment you should use, obviously not the telescope I use, but kind of give you some ideas on how to match the perfect gear, the right camera, the right mount, and not go and buy things that are going to make it very, very hard to use. Um, I will be starting a Patreon channel to help users with that and also doing some videos here on YouTube. Um, I want to also make some of this data um, available to other people to process. So through Patreon, you'll be able to get one or two objects a month, get the stack data that I have, the hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen for you to play with, and also high resolution wallpapers. Um, I'll be kind of giving out the Patreon tiers in my next video and also linking to it, uh, hopefully before the, the, the new year is up, the new year starts. And again, I'm excited to see what you guys think about it and how does this compare with other heart nebulas you've seen? Is this better? Is this uh, worse? Is this, um, can I do better? I'm curious to, to know. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.